Hey, it's your big brother birthday, man. So go ahead and um, you know, wish me a happy birthday. And if you could, you know, bless the Cash App or bless the PayPal or something, you know, or join the channel, you know, something like that. That'll help out. And make sure you hit the bell so you get notifications whenever I put a video up. And uh, make sure you like this thing too, man. Appreciate y'all. Love y'all, man. God bless you. And uh, I'm happy to keep it rolling, man. <laughs> Look, the first thing I want to say is for all y'all who show so much love, you know, I was dealing with COVID. I got so many messages on, on my page and, you know, here on the Chillin' Tales page and, you know, the social media, Twitters and stuff. You know, I appreciate y'all. Thank y'all. And, uh, you know, we doing all right. So we back at it, man. Happy to be here with y'all, man. Love y'all for real, for real. I spent all day making this. That's what my wife said softly in her sleep. And she kept on. I already took out the trash, honey. She was dreaming about me. Ain't that something? My wife dreaming about me? Oh, man. You know, I must been on. Uh, you know, I, I must be treating her pretty good, right? <laughs> you know, so, you know, we fought. Well, you know, we fought a little more than, than you know, we used to recently. And, uh... I ain't really been home a lot, uh, but she always, you know, welcomed me back, understandingly, and the sleep talking was nothing new. You know, my wife always talked in her sleep, scared the heck out of me, but this is, this is just how she get down, man. <laughs> I don't know why, but, you know, then she wanted them folks sleep with her eyes open too, man, so, you know, it's, uh, but I ain't got used to it now, wake up in the middle of the night, talking about let them in. And I be saying, like, who here? <laughs> so, but I got used to it now. You know, when we met years ago, I remember her parents making jokes about the way she sleep and talk and stuff like that. And, you know, and I find it kind of cute, you know. It's just like a silly little thing about her that, you know, that only I know about because we're her parents. But I know because we sleep together. So, I don't know, it's just like our, our, our weird, lame little secret or whatever. You know, so um, my stomach started growling. I'm talking about growling, growling. Like my stomach was like yelling at me, and then you know, so and I was late for for the dinner she prepared, man. Now my stomach growled so loud that she actually shifted positions and started back mumping. She said, "I've been cooking all day." Then she said. The red sauce turned out real good. Then she said, How's it taste? She paused for a long second, then let out this laugh. <laughs> wow, that works so quick. Look at your face, you're pathetic. Do you know that? What was she saying now? Her mean-spirited voice, man, just like, it's evil, like something up out of a movie or something, man. That just scared me, man, so, you know, I decided I need to wake her on up, man. Uh, as I reach my hand to shake her shoulder, she said something else. She like, spaghetti covers the taste of poison pretty well, huh? Don't it, honey? And that sleepy tone here, like a, you know, like she was just teasing me, man. And so I said, hey, love, wake up now. I spoke loudly, you know, and the room was quiet. And she, you know, barely moved this time. And she said, just die already. I screamed this time. It came out, you know, like me sounding scared. Wake up, man. You freaking me out. Get up. Her ass shot open. Face in the ceiling and had a little look of hatred cross her face just for a little second, you know. You okay? What's what's wrong? And before I could form an answer, my stomach growled super loud. And she rolled over to her side 
and gave me her signature, you know, look of concern, or I guess fake concern, because she's sitting here dreaming about poisoning me. And she said, oh, you're just hungry. Thank God, I thought. Well, never mind that. Dinner's downstairs in the fridge. I made your favorite spaghetti, and I've been cooking it all day, and that red sauce turned out perfect. Now, my wife, uh, you know, I already know that, uh, you know, she's trying to kill me. And I understand, because, uh, you know, it's the rational thing to do if your husband get on your nerves all the time. You know, just go and kill him, get it over with. And, uh, but the crazy thing is, yeah, and I do like spaghetti. And, you know, I like the hood spaghetti because you got two spaghetti. You got the hood spaghetti, then you got, like, the traditional spaghetti. Traditional spaghetti be, like, one pot for the noodles, one pot for the sauce, one pot for the meatballs and stuff. But hood spaghetti, everything just be in one pot mixed all up, man. Ain't no put the noodles on the plate, then the sauce, then the meat. No, it's just all one big thing, man, you know. So anyway, you know, I like that's how I like man. But it, and um, but the truth is, if she wanted to kill me, you know, her cooking so dang bad, the stuff probably killed me anyway. You ain't put no poison in there. <laughs> this story is called Ebb and Flow. Now it was supposed to be a nice day at the beach. You know, I packed this good lunch, man. And she wore this beautiful purple sundress. You know, it's sundress season. Now. Now, for y'all that don't know, um, sundress season is, of course, the summertime or when it's warm weather. And the thing about a sundress is, a sundress is really accentuate a woman's curves, man. You know, <laughs> now, you know, y'all go in the comments and uh, y'all, you know, y'all let me know. But uh, for y'all to know about sundress season, boy, when, uh, you know, that thing right there make it make a woman look real good, man. It make it makes her uh, her behind just just you know it just it just be it just be looking good, man. So you know that's that's what the, that's what the sundress do. And this girl here, you know, she had a nice little she had a nice little uh, little like the word, man. This girl here had one of them. Uh, she was a young girl, you know. We only twenty something, but. She had one of them old lady booties, boy. One of them old lady, old lunch lady booty, boy. It's <laughs> just all over the place taking up space booty, boy. So, you know, y'all know what I'm talking about. You know, just uh, let me know in the comments, y'all. Everybody know about that old lunch lady booty. <laughs> but anyway. Uh, so, you know, we had some nice little sandwiches and everything. And we even, you know, went swimming for a little bit. But that sun was, you know, coming down hard, man. So, um, you know, we packed everything up. And, um, you know, and uh, went down to the the other little spot where, because it, it was a little more shade and stuff over there. Now, she started just, you know, she she must have been like, she must have did pottery or something. Because she started sculpting this, look, you know, simple little castle, but it looked pretty good, though. And she was like, can I bury you, baby? Now, without thinking, you know, I just went on and greet. You know, <laughs> hey, man, yeah. I've never been buried in the sand, for real, for real. So, yeah, why not? Now, not long after that, the beach was at my eye level with her packing sand around my shoulders. Now, she said, you have a big head and it needs some shells. Now, you think you done seen a big head, man. Y'all should see my head. And then, you know, my lady told me that when I wake up, my head be like three times its normal size, man. So, man, I got to, I got, like, I can't even buy hats. Like, folk go to the store and buy a hat. I can't do that, man. I go buy a hat. You know, that mug got to be, I don't like hats anyway, but if, that's, man, that's partly because I can't fit the mugs, man. Boy, I got a dome, man. Now, I got a crane. I got a cranium, boy. <laughs> anyway, uh, so uh, what happened? What happened? What happened? So now she like, yeah, I got the big head. Now, now I could hear the smile. 
she had it on her face, man, as her feet just started walking towards the white clams piled by the incoming tide. Hurry up, I think the crabs are starting to bite my butt, I called back at her. Now I wish I hadn't, man. She must not have heard me very well because she turned around with this real, like, just this puzzled look, man. That's the only way I could think to describe it. Now, just as her body shifted, the tide hit her, you know, heels, throwing her balance off. And them big old legs flew up, you know, almost like a, you know, like she slipped on a banana peel in a cartoon or something. And her head smacking the black rocks. You know, that kind of messed up the little cartoon vibe. Like, man, she cracked her head, man. Now, instantly, a red stream of blood just come running from her head, man. And I just watched it run into the sand. Now, I screamed her name for at least an hour, man. And I didn't see her move. And my voice just felt, you know, like just torn up by the time the ocean began just, you know, touching my chin, man. Now, through the waves, I noticed the purple dress that she was wearing was starting to turn white from the salt water. Now, each little wiggling, jiggling attempt I made, it only made the sand kind of fall in and crush my chest more. And my little desperate movements and stuff was just making my lungs just pushing all that air out, getting weaker and weaker. That's it? Okay, that, that's a pretty dark story, man. For any kids that's listening. He didn't get drowned by the tide that came in and drowned him. He was saved by a magic dolphin. <laughs> and then him and the dolphin went on to live happily ever after, forever. <laughs> now this story is called Behave, but not behave like regular, like it got two E's, so it's like B, like Bumblebee, so I'm guessing this story gonna have something to do with acting right and bumblebees coming to get you or something. Ooh, excuse me. So anyway, a young man in the small shed started, you know, got, uh, okay, got scared awake with alert, you know, panicked eyes, man. Now, Ted watched as the boy, you know, looked around and picked up his surroundings and finally, the glare fell on him. What, well, you know, what you doing, old man? Are you the one who tied me in this chair? The kid's voice accused in a, in a scared, but, you know, you know, he's trying to sound tough tone, man. And Ted just stared at him blankly. Now, the captive didn't like the non-answer, so he began moving around in that small wooden seat. And the straps on his arm and legs held tight. And Ted half expected the kid to scream, but he didn't. Instead, he stopped his jerky motions and looked at him again. Wait a minute. You're, you're the honey guy. The old man who sells honey in town. Oh, shoot, dude. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm so, so, so sorry, man. Like, for real, for real. Like, I ain't mean to do that, man. I didn't know it was your honey. You know, my friend's dead, man. I promise. The kid's voice dripped with desperation. Now, Ted finally spoke. Don't lie to me, boy. You smashed my behinds because you felt like it. It's all on camera, and I you and I knows that you the one that done, done it. Now, the restrained kid just began sweating, and a look of dumb understanding passed his face. Then he spoke again. So what? What you gonna do, call the cops? My dad is the best lawyer in town, boy. And when he find out, he gonna be too mad. Can't hurt me, boy. Forget your beehives, old man. You lucky I didn't take a dump in them beehives. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Now, let me go now before it get even worse for you. Now, once more, the words seemed lost on deaf ears. And when the kid finished talking, Ted grabbed the nearby funnel. What are you doing? Let me go, you old, crusty, stinking old man, boy. That's what he yelled at him. Now, Ted stepped closer and shoved the black funnel down the kid's throat before he could make any more noise. He let out these little slurs that all came through the gag. 
The kid began panicking more this time. Tears rolled down his eyes and streams of scared confusion. Ted grabbed the boy's face and spoke his words very clear and slow. You've never been punished and it shows. And you think your actions don't have consequences, but you're wrong. Well, I'm here to teach you a lesson, son. One that you won't soon forget, boy. Now my bees were all that I had left. You know my girl left me. You know my she took the kids with her. You know all else I had was them bees. You know I'm in love with them bees. <laughs> I almost want to make love to them bees. I love them. Now you took that from me. You took that from me. You didn't have to do that. You didn't have to do that, son. Now what am I supposed to do? Where would they live? I ain't got no money to go buy another one of them things. Ted asked but knew that the answer. Snot bubbled above the funnel while the slurred yelps began to get louder. Ted reached behind his back and pulled out a small test tube. Now this here in Queen. Real beaut, ain't she? Look at that old fuzzy booty. <laughs> Well, look, she got lucky enough to survive your attack, so now we're going to find her a nice new home. And the thing about queens is they leave the whole hive now. Now, wherever they go, the colony go. Now, Ted Fingers tipped the tube into the black opening and watched the large bee slide down into the hole. And instantly, the boy's pleas began to boil with pain. Now, before leaving, Ted opened the slots on a small brown container. And the rest of the hive filled the room from outside screams mixed with fading behind a loud buzzer. All right, another dark story. Y'all know I don't be reading stories <laughs> before I get them. So, uh, you know, I will be knowing what to expect. But, yeah, that's, pre that's pretty dark right there, uh, Mr. Horror Homie Man. Uh, yeah, that's pretty dark, man. So, if any kids that's listening, the bees were magical bees. And after they went into the boy, they became, he became like a Spider-Man, but with bees. So instead of shooting webs, he would like shoot honey on bad guys and make them so sticky that they couldn't run away from police. <laughs> and also, any kids that's listening, um, your actions got consequences. So even if your parents let you get away with everything, um, that junk ain't gonna fly in the real world. <laughs> so, you know, you might get away with it now. You know, me, for example, my parents let me get away with a lot in high school, and I became a high school dropout. And um, the consequences of being a high school dropout is many, 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 many years and hours and minutes and seconds and months and days and and uh, nanoseconds and stuff of hard, grueling, terrible work that they tell you build character, and it does. <laughs> but the character that it builds is a guy that sometimes wishes that he uh, would have done a little different back in the day. But you can't change the past, but you can change the present. So what y'all thought I was done? <laughs> oh boy, I got plenty more sauce where that came from. Now this story is called Bad Neighbors. Now the neighbors make me nervous. They baked me a pie and left it on the doorstep. You know, some real old school TV stuff, man. Who the heck leave pies on folk doorsteps, man? Like, you know, come on, man. <laughs> now the neighbors make me nervous. They always yelling hi. You know, like just all, you know, it'd be early and I, you know, me, I go to work early, man. So the sun just coming up and every day I go to work. As soon as I step out to the, hi, I'm like, gosh, dog, man, you know, a simple wave would be enough, okay? And you ain't got to be all up in my grill, man. <laughs> the neighbors make me nervous. They wanted to meet my girlfriend. Now, you know, that that's all cool and all, but, uh, you know, like this girl here, uh, she ain't got no home training. I ain't gonna lie to you. That girl ain't got no home training, so she say whatever come to her head, man, and 
most of the stuff that come to her head is either stupid or really offensive, man. So, you know, she ain't one that I'm really trying to be introducing people to because she really make me look bad. The only really reason I deal with her because she fine, man, you know. But she wasn't fine, man. I so cut her off. But see, that's, that's the problem right there. Dealing with them just because they fine. That's going to get you in trouble every time. So, <laughs> every time. All right, my neighbors make me nervous. They super no nosy, boy. I'm talking about. Like, I remember growing up, my grandma and granddaddy was the most nosiest people ever, man. All my granddaddy, my granddaddy would purposely just sit by the window. Like, whenever he was in any room, he had to be by a window just so he could stay out of it. Like, even in the kitchen, just staying out the back door, just staying out the back window all day, so... You know, I know nosy folks, but these folks were worse, man. Just, you know, every time anything went on, yeah, everything's okay. Like, the smoke detector go off. How you hear the smoke detector all the way in my house? Hey, up there, is everything okay? You need a call a fire department? So one day I stood up my toe and I screamed <laughs> in the house. They show up at the door for that, man. And, uh, you know, so these folks nosy, man. Now the neighbors make me nervous. They always asking questions all day long, man. I mean, we're well, not all day because we don't live together. But every time I see them, just and it could be something small like how's the weather, how's the you know, how about them cowboys? You know, just always, just always questions, man. You know, and I'm, I'm kind of like my daddy, man. I hate answering questions, man. It just make it hard in a relationship because I'm like my dad, I want <laughs> my daddy hate answering questions man especially when he's doing something like watching a movie or sitting on a computer <laughs> you know but uh you know i guess he didn't get better now because he didn't get you know older but man, he was younger but i hate answering questions anyway the neighbors make me nervous they remember faces real well you know they still remember the girl i used to date when i first moved over here Talking all about it, man. Shoot, I don't forget that dang girl. Now the neighbors make me nervous. They always watch the news. All you know, all day long. CNN, Fox, MSNBC, uh, CBS, PBS, um, ESPN news. Any news they can get their hand on, they watch. And you know me, man. You know I listen to the news when I'm in the car here now and then. Like mostly the local stuff, just to see what's going on in the hood and all that. But other than that, you know, so I'll be I, I ain't finna sit there and watch no uh no all day, cause news really just like a big a big uh sitcom, <laughs> like a, like a big uh soap opera or something. So you know, I ain't I ain't much for the soaps, man. And uh, the neighbors make me nervous. I can't take it no more, man. You know, I hit my breaking point. You know, eyes and took that all eyes can take, man, and I'm tired. So, and <laughs> yeah, the neighbors make me nervous. So I'm gonna have to get rid of them. Straight like that. Wow, another dark story. And for any kids that's listening, by getting rid of them, he means um, learning real estate and finding them a nice beachfront property for them to live on for the rest of their days. <laughs> I got one more for y'all. Boy, I'm just too good to y'all, man. Just, I'm just too good to y'all, man. Come up and just get y'all a, a video full of stories, man. Four, five stories, whatever this is. Boy, I'm just too good to y'all, man. Oh, my goodness. Y'all just spoiled, man. Just spoiled, rotten. Matter of fact, the whole chilling tales just, just too good to y'all. Just giving y'all stories back to back to back. All these different narrators and evil, e evil idols and you know, oh y'all just spoiled, boy. Just spoiled, rotten. <laughs> this ain't no good, boy. Just y'all just spoiled, boy. Ooh. 
Well, you know, man, we happy to spoil y'all, man. Y'all deserve to be spoiled with the best creepy, scary stories and stuff, man. So, you know, I, I hope y'all, I hope y'all really enjoy this, man. And uh, we gonna keep it coming. And uh, y'all just keep listening, man. Keep liking, you know. Keep listening. Keep commenting. And I'll uh, just sit on back while I tell you this little story. Now, now this one called. Rumors of the Cannibal Cook. This story is by Craig Simmons, student publications class, eighth period, submissions to school newspaper. Now, our great town of Morning Star has a lot to offer. Is the Morning Star? I think the Morning Star is the devil, if I'm not mistaken. So that might be like a little, a little, um, little um, what you call it? Um, foreshadowing right there telling you this mother finna be dark hope it ain't too dark boy cause man then the last couple of ones boy. <laughs> so anyway Morningstar has a lot to offer parks that are to die for an amazing skyline or even a handful of nice restaurants there's something for everybody but is there some place you know you should be avoiding Maybe certain, maybe a certain downtown burger joint. Now we've heard the rumors involving the shack, so we did our resource. I mean research, and effects might surprise you. Now everyone knows that the owner of the shack, Joe Myers, uh, oh Michael Myers, okay, Joe Myers. There got to be another uh, little thing in the shack. There got to be like a little shout out to the cabin in the woods man that was a good movie bro guys dog I wish they could have made a part 2 I know because of the way the movie is a part 2 wouldn't make no sense but man that was a good movie man they almost probably should have like stretched it out and made 2 out of it instead of just 1 but that was a good movie bro but anyway uh, where I'm at where I'm at so Joe Myers so that must be like Michael Myers son or something most would agree that he's a good guy. And here's what he had to say about the rumors of his restaurant. So Joe, have you heard what the kids are saying about this place? <laughs> the kids are always saying something, but I think I have an idea. Now he seemed real tense when he was saying this stuff. Well, spill it then. Is this is it true or are you serving us human? Is that an accusation, young man? Is it? Don't lie. You know it is. The answer is no. My meat ain't human. The beef I use is cheap, but it tastes fine to me. Now, I didn't believe him. And then I saw the receipts for the most recent year's meat order. His statement checked out, but I kept on going. So what happened to the guy you hired a week ago? He said, are you kidding me? Um, no. I let him go because he smoked too much weed, man, all day long. The guy came in to work high. He started working at 9 o'clock in the morning. Who had 9 o'clock in the morning? Bro, you know, this some real stuff. <laughs> Look, he ain't put that in the story. I just put that in the story. Because it always blow my mind how you get to work and people be smelling like weed or people be high. You know, and you get to work at like seven, six, seven, and they already high. So I'm like, gosh, dog, bro, it's so. It must be hard out here, boy. You smoking on the way to work, five o'clock, six o'clock in the morning? Did you roll that up this morning, or you rolled it up the night before? You know, that just that just blow my mind, man. I, you know, I don't mess with no drugs, man. But uh, you know, and I, I wouldn't recommend it. You know, young kids that's listening, bro. That's like always blow my mind. And then the crazy thing about it is how they never get fired, <laughs> never get drug tested. It's just crazy. Like, folks show up to work smelling like straight gas, man, and never get drug tested, never get, uh, you know, just fired or nothing. I'm like, bro, I know y'all smell. Is everybody in here smell? So, hey, man, I don't know, but I guess it's just God take care of fools and babies, I guess. <laughs> so, anyway, 
Now he'll call him and ask him, but he gonna yell at you now. That boy, wow. Now he had out his old phone, man, old flip phone. And I was like, nah, I'm cool, cause I ain't finna touch no flip phone. <laughs> Look, if you got a flip phone, I'm not touching. I'm not touching a flip phone, okay? I don't care if I'm if I'm uh, trapped in a burning building. The only way to get out is to pick up a flip phone and call the 911. I ain't touching it, man. I I made it out. I figured something out. Now he was angry, man, super angry. So I went on and you know cut the thing on off after that. Now, before leaving, I was able to inspect the kitchen and the freezer. And if, you know, I was trying to see if, it, you know, if it was a body in there, that mug was gone now. So there we have it. Unfortunately, the shack does not serve human. Now, Joe don't plan on adding the delicious meat to the menu anytime soon. So we recommend either avoiding the place or at the very least, you know, sneaking some of that. Shoot, 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 shoot. Ah, Okay, so that last little thing y'all heard was uh, my computer dying, and I got scared because, um, you know, like uh, I hadn't saved this thing, and I'd done all these stories, and I never saved them, so, and I ignored the thing when they told me it was getting low in the first place, so, but thank God technology is where it's at, and it saved all the stories, because if I... Would have had to do them over. I just don't know if I made it. <laughs> Not tonight at least. But anyway. So the end of the story goes. Uh, we recommend either avoiding the place. Or at the very least. Sneaking some of that sweet stuff in. When you visit in the establishment. Okay. So yeah. The Morning Star must be a. a newspaper written by the, the devil folk. Who uh, like to eat human people. And uh, then blame restaurants for doing it when it's really the <laughs> the moral to that story is come on let's find some more in this story uh, I guess if you don't buy cheap meat to put in your food people won't be able to lie and say that it's human food <laughs> that's what I come up with so anyway thank y'all man hope y'all had a good time be back soon.